The communication process. That's what I want to talk about today. When I look at the communication process, I, it, it's akin to many of us and our relationship to automobiles. So it's something that I use all the time, but I don't really know how it works. I know that I press on the gas and it goes, I press on the brake and it stops, that's all I know. I know nothing about cars. Many of us know how to use it, some better than others, but how many of us can really break it down and figure out how does it really function and how does it work? In your mind, okay? Why do you say in your mind? Communication is all about who it is you're communicating with. Now we have the daunting task of getting this from here to our mouth, all right? How many of you have ever had the experience, I, I'm raising my hand because I have, had the experience where you had this wonderful, great, brilliant idea in your head? It's just flawless, like you impressed yourself that you had this wonderful idea in your head, and then you had to try to get that idea out to somebody else. I have this great idea. What's the idea? Uh, okay, <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll start to, uh, uh, I'll forget it. I don't, yeah. I, I don't even really, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to put it into words. It's so brilliant in a way that is the same from what I mean in my head so once I get it out of my mouth. Oh, All right, your, your loved one gives you a Valentine's Day card. And they typed a letter and put it in the card and gave it to you. You're in love. And you and your partner have never exchanged the I love you words to each other. What might be a really bad channel or medium by which to communicate I love you? Text, probably the first time I love you over text. What does that say about the person actually sending the I love you? It says more about the person than it does about the message. We can text, we can email, we can do smoke signals. Uh, we can do a voice message, we can do face to face, we can do a handwritten letter, social, a Skype, social media, etc. We have all these tools. Now this is funny because when I was doing this, like, these lectures back in the late 80s, half this stuff didn't exist. And so communication was pretty simple back then. If I wanted to communicate with somebody, I essentially had three main ways I could do it. Face to face, the phone, and a letter. The phone a letter. and a letter. Now I got all this shit. If you only had smoke signals to communicate, what types of messages would you communicate? The thing I love about being an old guy is I can see how technology has, has, has changed us and how it's progressed. So I remember there'd be like five of us on this huge job site and you know we'd take our trucks and go to different parts of the job site. When I first got the job, our sole means of communication was pager. Well, we called them yeah. beeper. In the early 80s, if you had a beeper, You're you were the shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I noticed how the communication changed as soon as we got those radios. Oh, sometimes I would only talk to maybe two or three messages to people all day. As soon as we got those radios, we had instantaneous connection with each other. How do you think the communication changed? A lot. Yeah. A lot more. All the time. Oh yeah, hey dude, I'm going to 7-Eleven. I fly you by, what's up man, you know? All of a sudden our communication like just turned to bullshit. Because we could. They are 100% in tune. Oh, that yawn's gonna be on here, man. Can't do that. Can't do that, bro. You forgot you were being filmed. He's like, okay. How many of you, I've been talking for 30 minutes, how many of you have been listening to every word I have said and have just stayed with me 100%. I'm up here talking and you're following this thing. <laughs> and you're following this thing going God knows where in your head, crawling along 150 words per minute, and your brains are 750 words you know, per minute brains. So what do you do? You have all this extra space and you, you can fill it up with other stuff and still listen reasonably well. You're thinking about your next class. Uh, you didn't get enough sleep last night. There's a bulldozer outside making a lot of noise. Anything that gets in the way of this communication process is called noise, and these lines represent noise. This is how ambiguous the communication and language can be. Right now, if I say the word cat, what does that mean? What is a cat? Okay, you're saying what? It's a pet. A pet? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five different definitions for arguably one of the most simple words in the English language, right? <clears throat> How do we ever communicate? How do I know what you mean? <laughs> Another interesting word in my estimation. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Who the hell changed the linguistical rules? When did Pip become cool? And why? 
Why is it now cool to call somebody a pimp, but in 1975 you would have gotten slugged? Let me give you an example of, of, of to, to get my point across. Okay, let's fast forward 20 years. And you have a 11-year-old daughter, okay? And you had just bought a new blouse that day. And your daughter comes in and she looks at your blouse and goes, man, that blouse is pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> That's pedophilic. <laughs> and then you go, excuse me? <laughs> pedophile? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh no, pedophile, man. That's cool. <laughs> pedophile. How does language change and evolve? Who, who, is there like some council, language council? Now we declare, pimp shall mean cool. <laughs> Sick shall mean good. <laughs> Where does it come from? And, and how do we know? Like, is there something we can look up? How do we know the rules? Uh, let's say it's the first day of class and you haven't met me yet, okay? You're right there, some authority and say, hey, this asshole Urbanovich, man, he can't, he can, you know, he's, he's wasted, he comes to ask in the class for drugs, this guy's got to go, right? <laughs> We're going to completely change the context in every way. Jordan and I are driving home, we get back on our 110 mile trek back to beautiful Santa Clarita, we're merging on Yucaipa Boulevard onto the 10 here, and I don't see this Mack truck, Mack truck comes over and just flattens my car. AMR Medical Emergency has to come. He walks away without a scratch, but I, on the other hand, am, have broken every bone in my body. They take me to Loma Linda, they put me in the emergency room, and I'm laying there, and I have broken every bone, and I'm in all complete body cast, and there's like little tubes going up my nose. And then Jordan here learns through the grapevine of what happened. So he gets in touch with everybody in the class, says, we've got to go to our professor's aid. We've got to go and visit him at Loma Linda. Thanks, Jordan, for doing that. Right? So you guys all get together, you go to Loma Linda, you come in my emergency room, and I'm laying there with my... <laughs> and you go, Professor, and I go, anybody have any drugs? <laughs> We're going to get you the drugs. <laughs> I, I, I just don't want to feel the pain. Positive or negative? I mean, it's negative, you don't want to happen. But how would you understand that message? Give the poor man some drugs, right? <laughs> But what changed? I said the exact same words, right? Strong out. What? <laughs> you don't look strung out. Okay, but I, I would even look strung out probably in the, in the hospital room as well. But you broke everything. You know? Well, look, emo the emotional context has changed, all right? Poor guy's just been in an accident. Physical context, the hospital room, okay? Just been in a major accident. So you need to take into account all of these things to make sense of any given message. But the problem is with context, you cannot repeat context. In fact, if I say the same thing five minutes from now, it's a different context. What's changed five minutes from now? Time, the temporal context has changed. Are you going to be a different person five minutes from now? Slightly, slightly different person. So I can never repeat the context ever again. So this is really underneath the hood of the communication process. Thank you. I want to take this off.